Thank you for staying with us. Now we're being joined by John Olua Dero. He is the Africa Regional Representative for Commonwealth Youth Sports for Peace and Development Network. Thank you for joining us on the program this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Victor. Of course. So, I mean, we've heard about how sports can foster peace and development, but then um, yeah. as a network, what are you guys doing to see that this actually comes to fruition? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, actually, at the uh, SUA SDP, uh, what we're currently doing now is to actually put forward an institutional framework that will ensure that all of this we've been saying about uh, the power of sport has come to peace building, material development and all of that is actually put in place. Uh, that means uh, there have to be a, a, a policy framework set in place to ensure that at least in Nigeria, uh, where we've been advocating all of these values, uh, we have a framework that will ensure the implementation of all of these policies. Uh, so, I mean, when you talk about framework, what are you looking at? Uh, first of all, uh, we need to uh, look at uh, a national policy that actually put forward uh, the role of sports uh, for development and peace. And that brings out the place of having a B, sort of like a sport B. And currently now at the uh, National uh, House of Representatives, we have a B called the Nigeria Sports B, which is sponsored by uh, Honorable Amuda uh, Kaneke. Uh, yeah, he, he, he spoke about it on the Hangout. Yeah, uh, and uh, the B actually... Um, discuss the role of sports uh, for development, talks about the establishment of sports institutions and uh, the National Sports Commission. Uh, we know uh, before now we have a National Sports Commission, but it was sort of scrapped because there is no um, policy framework, there is no B, there is no constitutional framework uh, to support the B. That was eye-opening to me, to be honest. Yeah, well, well, uh, it was scrapped February last year. Okay. February last year. And uh, coming up to that, for us to move forward in terms of sport development in this country, we really need, have, really need a B. Uh, we, need, we need a policy framework, we need a legislative framework for all of all about sport governance. And uh, Honorable Kaneke uh, talks, uh, talks about the place of funding for sports. But generally what we've seen about sports is, is all of this sports development. We need to actually harness the value of sports in terms of its promoting development objective and peace building objective. We've seen issues of ethnic clash, uh, religion issues and all of that all over the country. We need to harness the power of sports in fostering people together. And we've been talking about all of this for a while. Uh, it's time to get to action. It's time to actually put forward something that will ensure that this process is coming to implementation. And at CYSDP, what we're currently doing now is to not just mobilize support for the Nigerian sport people, it's also advocates uh, 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 the, the engagement of young people in this policy. Because um, when, you look at, when you look at sport, it's, it's actually the activities that young people participate in. Is, is a thing, if you look at sport generally, is a thing for the young people. Uh, the old also engage in sport. No, I mean, if you look the, at golf, it's yeah, a, it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. But uh, 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 when you look at it in broad time, you discover that we uh, have more peace, youths. We yeah. have more youths I, I get uh, your point. Uh, in sport. So, and when you look at the issue of uh, violent extremism, when you look at some of these, uh, especially when it comes from the political side of it, engaging young people in uh, election violence and all of that. These are things that is, is, is not uh, to, to young people that we have a lot of young people engaging in. So we need to actually uh, ensure that um, we, we harness that power, that power since it reaches out more to young people, we harness that power of sports to ensure that we cope some of these issues uh, are, are, are among young people. And what we are now doing at SWSDP is to uh, sort of uh, 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 influence the uh, some of the uh, outcomes of the B uh, in a way that, okay, we have, we have these CYSDP recommendations, which actually... Uh, yes, because I was actually going to ask if there was any input by your network on the sports bill that you've been talking about. Yes. So um, what input or what recommendations did you make? Okay, L let me just give a brief background to that. First of all, well, we are advocating that uh, the government should an export for development and peace, which is actually the central team of CYSDP. Secondly, uh, we are advocating that uh, on the uh, uh, th there should be there should be a national youth advocacy group on sports, which will be responsible for actually uh, advocating the role of sport for development and peace. When you look at the um, national sport commission, it's busy with organizing. Uh, maybe a national league or something, coordinating the NFA the and all festival. of that. Uh, they are busy with all of those big games. But uh, the advocacy group can take sports to the grassroots level, we advocate the role of sport when it comes to maybe uh, 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 teaching kids about sanitation, hygiene, or maybe uh, 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 sort of creating awareness about HIV. There are a lot of things you can do with sport when you actually put forward a programming. 
So an, 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 another role of the uh, National Advocacy Group on Sport is also that um, they also train uh, young people, youth workers, on now they can actually mass. Because th that is the thing with, with sports. You need to equip people to know how to use sports intentionally to gain those outcomes. So that is one of those roles of the, uh, of the working group. Then, thirdly, we are advocating that on the board of the National Sports Commission, we want to have youth representative on the board. Those are our three main uh, recommendations, which, of course, has been approved by Commonwealth uh, Sport Ministers that uh, the uh, Minister of Sports, Solomon Dalong, has approved it. We are now trying to push this thing into the Nigerian Sports Bay. Mm -hmm. That is what, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and currently we are hosting the campaigns, uh, Sport for Development Energy campaign, which is also uh, trying to ensure that all of this come into play. Well, let's wait and see how that plays about which sport are you particular about? Uh, you let's know, say, uh, which sport are you a fan of or which sport football. do you play? Football. Uh, which club do you support? Uh, actually, I'm not the f club person. Okay. Generally, and I have reason for that. I prefer, t I prefer club, uh, sports at the community level. Okay. So, I mean, I mean, is there a football club from your state? No, community level, street football. Yeah, um, oh, so street football. Yeah. You don't, which state are you from? I'm from Ekiti. Oh, there's no team from Ekiti in the Nigerian Premier League at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why you don't support a <laughs> club. But then, John Olua, thanks for coming on the program. Thank you very uh, much. You are the Africa Regional Representative of the Commonwealth Youth Sports for Peace and Development Network. Thanks for coming on the program and sharing your thoughts. Thank you very much. Well, we'll take a quick break. And when we return, of course, we will take the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel. That's the videos that you watched the most on our YouTube channel in the past week. Stay with us. Because somebody rushed to court to file a process, then we should abandon our constitutional responsibility then to carry out, to stop what we are doing. It is another dark day for democracy. We begin this week's most viewed videos with the feature on the National Assembly focusing on the face-off between the upper legislative chamber and the Controller General of the Nigerian Customs Service. Up next in fourth is the video of Nigerians counting their losses after being affected by xenophobic attacks in South Africa. Yeah, I've been here since two, eight years. Everything I work for, everything, everything has gone. Please, I don't know what people, Nigerians, what they're going to do to help us. I mean, mechanic, everybody that is doing mechanic at home, they know how it, what it costs for someone to destroy a whole workshop. Please, I don't know. The third spot is taken by the video of a social commentator explaining why, in his opinion, Mr. Ibrahim Magu was not confirmed as the substantive chairman of Nigeria's anti-graft agency, EFCC, by the Nigerian Senate. And we saw that Magu was rejected not just on the report alone, but based on his inability to show competence for the job. He was asked critical questions relating to his job, which he could not answer. And if that the video of the recovery of a doctor who jumped into the Lagos Lagoon, losing his life as a result, takes the second place. And in first place is the video of the shooting that took place outside the UK Parliament where four people died and many others got injured. Well, those were the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. And that's the program this week. Thank you for being a part of it. Do remember the engagement continues via the social media addresses showing on your screen. Thank you for watching. I'm Victor Mathias. <laughs>